Hey guys, David Hughes with Theater Advice. Today is a very exciting day for me because I finally get to show off this $207,000 theater we finished just a few months ago. actually uh, just uh, put up for the CD Awards this year for Home Theater of the Year. Uh, I hope we win. It'll be weird if we don't at this point. We've got some stuff hiding behind the walls. We've got fancy doors. But to truly understand where this room came from and why it looks this way now, we've got to go back in time. So in this first picture, if you notice, we've got me standing in the corner and it's actually uh, the back the back right corner of the of the room and where the window is on the left is actually the screen wall believe it or not um, we've got of course got rid of all those pictures and replaced them with acoustic paneling um, got rid of the couch all that stuff we had to rip out all the all of the uh, speakers in the ceiling but if you look at the biggest change in the room believe it or not sometimes you look at these rooms and you and you just take it for granted but the ceiling was shaped very strange and it was going to be bad for acoustics and it was going to be bad for putting star ceilings in and things like that. So we actually had a custom soffit uh, built all the way around the room and rebuilt the whole ceiling uh, so that it would be flat with a tray. And then on this next picture here with the cabinet in the hole, the, uh, this is actually where the subwoofers are and it's still a hidden cavity. So I hid the equipment in there in a rack. I hid the subwoofers in there. So we took out the cabinet. I had a contractor actually repurpose that cabinet as, a, as like a bar or a hutch in his dining room. And then we built, uh, we took that wood off the wall and made like an accent wall in his living room. So we actually repurposed all of that, all of that material in there. And um, the closet, I'm not going to show you much of because we didn't redo it. We didn't want to spend any money in there already past 200 grand. Um, but the rack is in there and I'll show you the, the doors that open later and things like that, that access that cavity. But I wanted to utilize that space so that we didn't have to look at subwoofers and things like that on the floor. And then this last picture is dead on, straight on the window. That's actually the screen wall. So when you come in from the rear through those beautiful doors, you've got the cavity on the left that you can't see anymore. Beautiful soffit around the room. This room is 22 by about 20. It's a big, big space. Um, and what we had to do is we built a full baffle wall, full insulated baffle wall right across that, uh, that entire space with cutouts for all the speakers. I'm gonna have my guy cut in that picture now. Um, just so you can see some, you know, some kind of transition pictures as you go. And uh, now to go back into the future. Hey guys, I'm going to start, uh, I'm going to come back into this, <laughs> apologizing for the cheesy uh, going into the past and future thing. It was my idea and I hope that it works out on film because uh, we're doing it anyway. And stay to the end because I'm going to pop up an equipment list and talk about the equipment and stuff like that too. But now I can tell you what we did with the room now that you've seen it. Uh, bef now that you've seen the before pictures. So we've got five chairs. We always have the money chair. If you ever see a design by me, I almost beg clients to do the money chair. I have to have a chair in the middle of the room. It kills me when people have four chairs and stuff like that. Um, it's no big deal. We sell four chair systems, but I'm just like, man, you're going to find me sitting on the cup holder in the middle. It just, it's too much for me. I have to be in the middle. Um, so we went with five chairs and bar. The client apologized for not getting any stools yet. Um, he just doesn't sit back there. It's really, I was like, it's no big deal, man. But, um, so we don't have stools yet in the room, but what we did do is, so this is that baffle wall I talked about. So this is a full flex baffle wall. You can actually watch the fabric flex. It's fully insulated. We've got, um, we've got acoustic. These are, these are kind of like built in base traps with wall behind it even. So they did some base traps in the front. All throughout the room, we're gonna have a mixture of absorption, diffusion, and reflective surfaces, okay? Uh, we went with the, we used the wall as the reflective surfaces and the columns for the most part. Most of these are diffusers and absorbers. So as you feel here, you can get both. This is where the subs are. So you can see I hit a little handle here and this actually pops open and there's two subwoofers in there. It's actually really ugly. There's no reason to see it, but there's two subs on the floor in there. Um, they're the, they're the Kef subs. I might actually change them out there, believe it or not. Um, but, uh, but they're working well right now. We've got full LEDs in all of the columns. I'm going to change colors in a little bit when I'm kind of done talking about what we did with the room, but we've got full LEDs in the columns, all RGB color changing. 
We've got little puck lights all the way around. All of the lighting in this room, we tore everything out and went full low voltage, which I actually do as well um, at Theater Advice. So we'll, we'll do, uh, we do under cabinet lighting, we do under counter lighting. It'll be another video, but a lot of that pulled into this space because we just, we ran, um, we ran either 16.2 or 16.6 throughout the whole room, uh, depending if it was just white or RGB and um, totally re rewired all the room with transformers and stuff like that. Let's talk about this screen for a second. <laughs> so the screen uh, is a 160. It's the exact screen I have at home. It is gonna be a 160 zero edge slate screen innovations, 1.2 gain acoustically transparent screen. And as it fades to black for no reason, we've got the Kaleidoscape symbol up there. Um, of course we have Kaleidoscape. Behind the screen are Three 5160s, don't quote me on that. I'm not good on, I, I have a pretty good memory, but I believe that's what they're called. The uh, the KEF 5160s and the matching subs, um, two of them. So we're gonna pop up that picture, maybe like here somewhere. And <laughs> we'll see how that looks. And uh, we'll show you what the wall looked like before the screen went up. So we've got the 160 uh, on the wall, the slate. What's really cool is we actually built, there's actually a door that pops down and uh, the, the projector, is housed in there. And it is one of those uh, Epson laser projectors I talked about in the other video. So that is a 6,000 lumen commercial grade laser projector in there. This room, even with um, all these lights on, I'll run over here and get this remote and kind of put it back on. I don't know how much you'll see this on film, but I can assure you it's just unbelievably, unbelievably bright and so good. Um, I mean, you're getting a ton of contrast on that screen and brightness, um, just, just, with a ton of light on. I mean, these LEDs I've got turned all the way up on the columns. All the puck lights are turned 100% on. The stars are turned on. Four bar lights turned on. So it's, the lighting in here is insane right now um, for filming. So a couple other aspects here. We chose the, the gray doors uh, or the gray fabric on all the acoustic panels. Um, all of this was brought in uh, from Florida by a company called Acoustic Innovations. So I do want to give them credit on the job as well. Um, we sometimes at Theater Advice do these jobs. I don't have the software to do 3D rendering. So sometimes you get that client in and he's like, hey, you know, um, I've got this X budget. And when you know the budget's that high, you really want them to see the exact space they're buying. So sometimes I do subcontract out design firms and things like that. And on this one, we were super busy at the time. Um, the client actually came in with an $88,000 budget. So 80 to 90, he said, and um, he landed on 88. Uh, we're at 207, so we screwed up, but uh, we, he did that. We didn't do that. We just gave him the options, um, and that's every client that comes to us like that, but, you know, he started talking about acoustics and things like that. When you, when you start talking about acoustics, your budget can get really, really crazy because he wanted the room to look like this. I could tell, and so I was talking to him, and he said, well, you know, let's see. Let's just see where we land. Let's get a design together, so we got a design together, and, um, you know, we landed around that 200,000 mark all said and done. Uh, another aspect of the room is in the floor, there is a uh, Dynamat Dynapad. So that was actually a really big, people like to talk about like, like struggles and challenges and stuff like that in the room. And believe it or not, that was one of the bigger challenges in the room because he added that later. So we hadn't planned for it. And Florida, um, the Acoustic Innovations, they'd already designed how tall these columns are gonna be, where the baseboard was gonna land uh, based on the thickness of the carpet and things like that. So what I had to do was, um, we had to kind of do some field adjustments, raise everything a tiny, tiny bit. And where, where it came into problems, and th these are the things that, you, when you own a custom company and you do these jobs, and believe it or not, this is probably the 50th job I've done that kind of looks like this. This is my favorite one, but um, I've done these before and there's always something. There's always something where you're like, man, um, that's a problem and you have to think through it and you have to figure it out. And I've always been able to figure it out, but I was sitting out there in a subwoofer box watching the guys put the carpet in. I paid them extra to roll the Dynapad out. They rolled the Dynapad out and it gets to the edge and they're like, I can't get the tack strip because now the carpet in the Dynapad with the mat was too high. So they couldn't end the carpet. So I actually had the idea to cut the Dynapad back about like six inches so that it would slope down to the edge and roll. And if you look at the door there, I don't know if it'll come on, I don't know if this is gonna, if this is gonna come out on film, but if you look at this door, this slopes down. I mean, you can, you know, if you're a tiny character, you could roll right down on here. So this is quite the slope. So that's one of those things that we just didn't really think about. And uh, 
you know, just design challenges, custom challenges that you run into. Um, that door had a, uh, when they sent the doors, one of them had a gold kick plate and the other one was silver. So we had to get that swapped out. Just, you know, the like, little fun stuff. But uh, so there's Dynapad under here because he didn't want, um, he wanted the room to be a little more solid. We rolled the Dynapad up on the walls. Baseboards went around it, uh, cinching the Dynapad. So it's actually a really, really, really solid room. Uh, full, full room acoustics, full design by Acoustic Innovations. Um, so full acoustician design. We've got... Uh, the only thing that's sheetrock in the room is, is the tiny bit of sheetrock around each column or around each uh, column and, pa and panel. And we did that on purpose. We've got Sherwin-Williams iron ore. Everything else is tricorn black. Those were my decisions. Um, he, the client let me kind of run with some decisions on my own. The gray fabric uh, we chose with, uh, with AI. They did a really, really good job. They brought in some LEDs. Uh, that was another challenge because... They kind of sent us some of the wrong parts to control the LEDs um, because we were doing it with Control 4. So we had to get different transformers and different um, DMX controllers and stuff like that. We eventually figured it out. I'm going to do some cool lighting, uh, some cool light changes later on. Um, back here is the equipment rack. He can, he can zoom in here and look at it a little bit. Um, the rack is clean. It's a beautiful rack. You can kind of poke your head around there. We've got Kaleidoscape. Um, we ran with a Marantz as the preamp. Look, that's something I did, and I know that there's going to be some comments like, oh, I can't believe you didn't do a preamp and all this kind of stuff. But here's, the, here's my deal on preamps and things like that, and I'll probably do a separate video on it, but I'm going to touch on it because I know it's going to be a sticking point. I went with Marantz as the preamp simply because, and it's a Marantz preamp, but I went with Marantz as uh, the reason is they, Marantz and Denon make the best HDMI board on the market right now. Um, the proof of that is even a, like, a, like a Macintosh MX123, which I actually I, I absolutely love, they use the Marantz HDMI board in that piece, okay? So you got a very, very expensive piece of equipment that's pulling an HDMI board out of a Marantz to use it. They do that on purpose. Companies like Parasound and all these other companies have tried to, to deal with HDMI and its issues and can't. And so what they end up doing is buying these boards and, and they should, you know, quite frankly, it's why, why reinvent the wheel on that? It's going to be the same anyway. Um, so I'm glad that they do that. I used Marantz cause it was going to be less problematic. I, you know, what I hate is you sell a guy a $207,000 theater and you put, you know, Trinov in here, you put Storm in here or whatever. And those are great pieces and I sell them sometimes, but I just didn't want to deal with some of the problems, um, that came with that. And I'm a, I'm a manual calibrator anyway. Um, I actually showed up today 20 minutes early just to calibrate it, which has nothing to do with this video, but helps the client. Um, so on the doors, these are also acoustically treated. These are padded doors, fully tufted. Uh, you've got the, all the nail heads on there and things like that. Kick plate, super sexy doors, fake portal. Um, absolutely love this look. As the client comes in, he now can, uh, can choose what he's coming in here for. So if he's coming in here just to show off the room, I made him a presentation button. I'm not gonna um, touch it right now because it'll change the lighting of the room, but he can hit that button and the lighting comes on uh, like all at 50% or so. It's a very, it's subdued, but it's still pretty bright. And it, he can show off the room to friends, family, stuff like that's really neat. We've got Kaleidoscape, Apple TV, Blu-ray player and Node. So if he's coming in here just to listen to some two channel music or listen to music, he can pull up the uh, blue sound node and do that. And obviously you've got the theater off button pops that off um there's a timer so it gives him like 30 seconds to leave and then the whole room will shut down so that's the uh automated portion of the room here we've got some squishmallows we've got baby yoda i like baby yoda he's chilling um his kids got him this because he loves the, the uh, room so much i think it's the coolest thing ever i'm a as you saw my lego collection and things like that i'm a huge uh huge Star Wars guy, so I dug the Squishmallows and left them there for the video <laughs> when I came in. I'm going to go in here and kind of show you what the control looks like. So right now we're on Kaleidoscape. So we've got uh, star icons. We can cut the stars off and on. Um, you don't need to look at it because they just turned off and on. That's not very, sh that's not, you know, that's not very surprising. But when we get into the lighting here, so we've got the columns uh, and as he kind of pans around, I will change the color. So he's got a ton of presets in here. So obviously, you know, this is going to be, I'm going to watch Star Wars, right? So now we're turning the room into the Death Star. Um, happens really, really fast. 
We've got full color wheel control. So if we want to fine tune things and get really, really deep into it, we can mess around with the color wheel and go, go full color changes. I call this, I'm watching the masters. So this is, we're watching the masters. I actually dig the green. The green with the, uh, the, all the gray in here looks really cool. And then blue under the sea, he's got that guy. You know, that's gonna be for, for those mood movies, I would put that on to watch Ready Player One, something of that nature. Um, I think things like that are cool. And even though I just do not want to do it, we're gonna go summer blockbuster, Barbie Pink. And it is called Barbie Pink. So this room is fully set up for this year's summer blockbuster, Barbie, which I'm gonna be honest with you, is probably not my jam, but that's cool anyway. My deal is white, I absolutely love it. Um, the whole, when the whole room is white, I know it's boring because it can be so many cool colors, but I dig the white. You cut the columns down, you cut the bar down, you cut the soffit down, everything's super smooth dimming. Um, all the lights we use can dim down to 1%. So we use very, very high-end, uh, uh, lighting, Illumini, um, light strips and things like that. Um, all of these are, um, all these little pucks can dim to 1% clean. So all the, all the lighting we use is very, very high end. Lighting is such an important part of what we do. Um, both in theaters and in homes now, we help our builders, you know, do some cool lighting and stuff like that too. I wanted so. to talk about the chairs that are in this room for a second. Um, love the company, they're by uh, Row One and the website's row1ht.com. They're really good chairs. Um, we've gone through a bunch of chair manufacturers from that are either handmade, uh, you know, here and things like that, and their customer service was terrible. And then um, even though these are made in China, they they do all the right things. So they do a lot of like leather on the seating surfaces. Um, this is actually an all leather chair. This is their Cortez. Um, and then this one's got the motorized headrests, the lights that I don't ever tell anyone to turn on because it lights up the screen. Um, but this is their top of the line Cortez chair. So we did five of those in here. Uh, when we get back to the showroom, I'm actually gonna do a small home theater chair thing. So we'll talk more about the Cortez, but that's the one we used in here. So if you wanna learn more about that, tune into the uh, probably the video after this one or something next week. And uh, we'll talk more about chairs, but this is the Cortez. Uh, did wanna give you a rundown of the equipment list in this room, because people always are interested in that. The equipment list is the 5160s, the matching subs up front. We've got the 3160s on all of the sides and rears, and then we've got the matching THX in ceilings, which I don't know the number off the cuff, but they're those um, eight inch THX in ceilings that match the 3160, 5160 um, uh, uh, lineup there. And then the subs are the uh, actually the Kef Cube 12s in here, um, two of them. They're both phased completely differently and they're turned on an angle in the cabinet. In the cabinet. We're running a Marantz, uh, Marantz full preamp We've got a uh, Parasound Halo A31 amplifier running the front 350-160s. We've got the Kef amp, of course, running the subs. We've got the powered subs, so they're powered by themselves. We've got a Kaleidoscape in here. Uh, we've got a Blu-ray player, Sony Blu-ray player in here. Um, didn't care as much for like the audio portion of it, so we didn't go Panasonic or anything like that. Uh, for music listening, we've got a Blue Sound node. And to run all of the rears, we're using a uh, Rotel 1504s. So, um, full 7.2.4 uh, um, Dolby Atmos theater. And um, we'll pop up an equipment list really quick so you can screenshot it and, uh, and see it and read it if you want to. Um, and I really do appreciate it. This is a weird, weird little journey for me. And um, please like and subscribe, of course, you know, as they say. And uh, I hope to keep this content coming and uh, uh, more in the future. And we'll visit some rooms I've even done in the past. So. Uh, I really appreciate you guys. Thanks.